Oh, it's also like the famous I'm walking here line. Like that wasn't planned. Someone was actually trying to drive and didn't know they were like shooting a serious thing. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, I'm um, walking here. Fuck. There's another one for, he uh, actually got startled. That's just what he happened to say. Oh god. No, uh, like yeah. in the Godfather when they say leave the gun. Take the cannolis. The take the cannolis. No, I meant to revive. Because they really bought cannolis and he was hungry. <laughs> So he just, as a joke, said, take the cannolis, not remembering that this was, like, one of the cuts. And he thought they were like, just, like, practicing Fuck. or something. Yeah. But they liked it so much that they just left it in. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I like it. Okay. They have, have fun. There was like, when it comes to the spontaneous things you see in movies, I have two <sighs> favorites. One was technically planned, and the <laughs> other was complete accident. I love it. The first one is from Aliens. And by me, well, not Aliens, Alien. And by me saying that, I'm pretty sure at least two other people in the chat know what I'm talking about. It's the scene where you see a chest burster for the first time. Yeah, oh, I know and about this. The, it's like, so <clears> everyone <throat> in Twitch chat, if you didn't know, in the first Alien movie, you had the chest burster scene where the iconic Xenomorph <laughs> chest burster pops out and is like, oh, hello, and everybody freaks the fuck out. Hello. No one knew that was going to happen apart from the, like, the guy in charge of the scene and the guy laying on the fucking, you know, laying yeah. on the table in the scene when his chest bursts and every- one of the actors actually fucking fainted. Hang the fuck on! Oh, um, jeez. Yeah, no, there's another one too. Did you know they used similar techniques when filming the Blair Witch Project? Yes. Because, yeah, there was a, a fact- oh, there was a fact channel who did a thing about this. One of the- where, um, Damn for instance, when they're- Finally! Jesus screaming and running away in the middle of the night, Christ! Wait, that they've what? actually done- oh. <laughs> oh, Fantastic! <laughs> fan fucking task uh, no. It went from Fire Yoshi to Skeleton Yoshi. Oh dear. It's a drunk oh, glitch. Oh, shit. He's got a bone to pick with you. Oh, shut the fuck up! Oh, yeah. <laughs> you believe you left for dead. <laughs> Wait, hold on. The but now. not tickling your funny bone. The what the hell? hell? <laughs> <laughs> this situation Fuck. is getting boneless. <laughs> <laughs> what is the skeleton's favorite snack? Um, go on, yes! No. no! Go on, yes! Death. What? Yes. What no. is the skeleton's favorite no. instrument? <laughs> Why was it really so awesome? awesome. <laughs> A bass? Rams! 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 Fuck! <laughs> The moment where he's slamming his own head against stuff. <laughs> no, slam, slam! Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, no, it's like, so y'all were talking uh, about uh, aliens and those special... Speech. Oh, sorry, well. I was about to say, uh, I don't think anyone here is qualified to handle domestic disputes. <laughs> 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 What about imported uh, disputes? We, we got logic. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! You guys started talking aliens though, and the special moments behind the scenes. You got me engaged. You just you activated the alicorn. <laughs> engaged? You you've already been married, then. Ha ha ha! It's like that reminds me of the other scene I wanted to talk about. Well, so, before you do, I wanted oh, right. to name I wanted to name my favorite scene. Yeah. Okay. Even yeah. though this movie's blasphemy, Alien Resurrection, that moment where she throws the basketball and it's into nothing but net, that was real. Mm. That was yeah. a real shot. Yeah. That was, that was a real too. shot. It was like that was her last one day. actor had to like. Fucking... Didn't he have to stop himself before he ruined the scene? No, he actually did damn near ruin the scene because, uh, but luckily they, they said, no, 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 it's good. We can still cut it off just the time. Um, they had her training with a professional NBA player to make that shot, but no matter how many times she tried, she just couldn't get it just right. Um, so they basically just said, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just throw it up in the air and we'll just have somebody... We'll do have a magic. ball above the hoop and drop it into the hoop like it's nothing but that. Don't worry about it. Just like a little small op effect. And nope, she she just went for it. She wasn't. She said she wasn't even really thinking about it. She just went for it. <laughs> That's where the magic is made. <laughs> yeah. Use the force, Ripley. <laughs> You're just the doing. Fuck? You don't even worry about being cool. That entire movie's budget was just to get her on that damn movie, and even she couldn't save that movie. 
Mm. You tried, Sigourney. It wasn't your fault. I like Sigourney. It's companies, Still and they only care about though. the money instead of the quality. Meanwhile, ha like more of my team is about to. What the hell is that? Oh! What the hell? oh Fuck you! Jesus! Well, so, I think the Reaper came for him. Yeah. Don't fear the Reaper. Also, before I think of, bring up the second thing, I remember Aeon was saying something about Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Yeah, like, so the way that they would film it would be like, they'd be given a set of really simple instructions, and every time they'd be going out to do more filming, the director also gave them a dwindling food supply to make them anxious and irritable, so that when they were irritated with each other, it would be, they knew about this going in, by the way. Okay, so, okay, that's what was going to be my next question. Yeah, anyway. no, no, they knew about it going in, but they knew that they would be genuinely irritated. Um, but then they would also tell them certain things, like, uh, for instance, the night scene where I think it was like um, two of them were walking in the woods and they see, and they allegedly see something and then they run away screaming. There really is something there, and they were not told about what it was. What they were, what, typically how that scene would go down would be they would be given a set of instructions and they'd be like, Okay, um, you are to go to this location and talk about the Blair Witch for... They ad-lib all those, too, by the way. Talk mm -hmm. about the Blair Witch for about two minutes, wait for signal. Or it'll be like, wait for signal or something to happen, or you'll know it when you see it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There actually was a guy that they had in a strange appearance, dressed in white, walking in the woods that night, by the way. Oh, that's geez. what they saw. Yeah, that's ah, what they actually it. saw in real life, and we're not but, told about. Yeah. Remember that. Hmm. I was also going to give an, another example. Um, everyone here has seen Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers, right? Yeah. No. Nope. Wait. No. Fucking. <laughs> are, you talking, are you talking about the helmet thing? Because that. Yes, the helmet the, thing. The helmet kick. Oh that was yeah, my that's second one. beautiful. Yeah, no, that was my yeah. second one. So, I, I, can I handle this one, please? Sure. Go ahead. Thank I you. got one after okay, so, this. In, so, in that Lord of the Rings movie, there's a scene where... Aragorn... <laughs> Aragorn yes. I, haven't watched it in, I haven't watched it in so long, but yeah. Aragorn Aragorn. finds a whole bunch of burned corpses and believes that he fucking... Like, I think he thinks that the hobbits have died among them. Yeah, and he fucking... So, he... Yeah. So, he fucking... You know, he does this routine of getting angry, and then he goes and he kicks the helmet away. He breaks his fucking toe, but he plays it off as just a fucking... That he's just in agony God, for his it. loss. But no, he was funny. in actual physical pain. Damn it! He actually reshot that, like, multiple times. Because he, like, just oh, kicked it the first time. Son and of like, a oh, bitch. what if he could kick it closer to where the camera is? It'd be a better shot. So he retried and retried. <laughs> then on that time, he actually broke his foot and screamed. And oh, it, jeez. Like, oh. It made the pain genuine, which made the scene work. Yeah. But ow. <laughs> At what cost? Yeah. Well, he yeah. still kept filming oh, also, afterwards. Yeah, that's also, the thing. He, he, they didn't stop. He didn't, like, tell them, yeah, my foot's broken. They kept going, and they were doing a lot of that running around in New Zealand, looking like they're going cross-country, you know? Oh, and he fuck. didn't tell people, yeah, I hurt my foot, till like, hours later. That's dedication to the... That's dedication to the bit. What a fucking boss. But also, right. a small mm -hmm. bonus. Anybody remember that scene where the flag falls off? Or, like, the yes. flag tears off of the wind? That was an accident as well, but it was so thematically appropriate Ooh. that they kept it in. I did not realize that was an accident. Hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> now for a funny one, uh, in Game of Thrones, Wait, no, hold on. there's that hold one on. scene. Hold on, Alan said he wanted the same thing after the... Oh, okay. Um, okay, this is more of a, believe it or not, this was actually real kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting thing about the Fast and Furious movies, even if you've just seen clips of them, is that Anytime they could have actually done the stunt in real life, they actually did. And you'd be surprised at how much of it isn't CGI, including, um, they confirmed this only two years ago, even though the movie's been out way longer. There's a scene in one of the Fast and Furious movies where they're, like, two of the main characters are towing a 9,000 pound vault, uh, <laughs> with two Dodge Chargers. Many people thought that was fake, but apparently that was Damn legit. It. They actually oh. towed a, a real 9,000 pound vault with two Dodge Chargers. 
Hmm. And no other mechanical assistance. That's impressive. People yeah. underestimate well, the yeah. horsepower of those overpriced cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no, those are cheap, dude. Like a charger you can get for pocket change in the US. Oh. I can literally get well, one for two thousand dollars. Yeah. At okay, fair too? enough. Well, yeah, at the time you could have because its competitors are usually twice its price range. It kind of undercuts them. Mm. Okay. But you can afford a charger. Like... You can't get a BMW 3 Series for the same I'm... price. Yeah. I'm just used to that kind of stuff being expensive, so I'm just like, oh, lots of money for such a... Oh, yeah. no. In America, that's V8, like, rear-wheel drive, like, muscle car cars are stupidly cheap over here. In a good way. <laughs> okay, so I have this one... So I do have a little example, mainly from... I kind of have seen this movie, but I never got a chance to fully finish. Well, I did finish it, but I never saw it. Oh my um, god! <laughs> like an extra large example instead. Uh, anybody's familiar with The Hateful Eight, right? Uh, Quentin Tarantino's movie? Are yeah. you talking about that Leonardo, uh, div um, Cappuccino? Uh, no, that's Django Unchained. Oh, okay. No, Django Unchained. Uh, Hateful Eight is the one that has Kurt Russell. Alright. So, like, there's a scene in the movie where, like, one of the characters is strumming this guitar. Now, in the scene, now, for the movie, they, um, Quentin Tarantino actually got this really rare vintage, like, old acoustic guitar just specifically for the movie. And what they were supposed to do was that Kurt Russell's character was supposed to take the guitar and smash it, but they were supposed to take the guitar out, give him, the, give him like, a fake one, and he would smash that one. Oh, what no. instead? What instead oh, happened shit. was that what what instead happened was that they didn't get a chance to tell Kurt Russell to stop, so he grabbed the real guitar, <gasps> smashed it to pieces, and, and the actresses and the girl who was playing the guitar literally had the legitimate actual reaction of holy shit! Because of the fact that Kurt Russell actually smashed this thousand-year-old vintage guitar. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh. Oh, oh, I think I think we, I think we crushed Golden Soul, all things considered. <laughs> no, like okay, it was a, so it was as, a century old too. Did dude, you you said that was a thousand years old? Jesus Christ, that's I fucked up on that. It was a century old guitar. Okay, apparently. but still, is the so, thing that irritates. It, 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 no, I I, <laughs> I need to I need to mention this. I as much as I love listening to classic rock, I never ever understood the appeal behind bands and musicians like Jimi Hendrix and The Who smashing their guitars apart. Why do they do that? That's hundreds well, of suppose. thousands of dollars yeah. worth of hardware. I, I think it's the yeah. idea of flaunting wealth. Like, I'm so wealthy, I can just destroy this. Basically. Yeah. That doesn't mean shit. Be like, I thought it was always supposed to be like, just a, like a, a high octane, that rock, energetic rock stars type using, thing. Usually. Yeah, high octane makes sense too. Yeah, just like, you know, friggin' the extreme. And stuff like that. Yeah. I'm on so many drugs. Damn it! It's like, I don't know, appealing to people's desire to just break shit. Because humanity has always been really good at two things making shit and breaking shit. Have a cake ah. and eat it too, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down with the industry. Wait, not I didn't industry. know Jimi Hendrix know. did that nonchalant, though, and I'm Down a big fan of his stuff. That's Jimi Hendrix did that a lot. Hey, Mr. Good. Yeah, no idea. Dude, Dude Jimi Hendrix did yeah. so much shit with his guitar. He even set his guitar on fire. Mm. I mean... And it's still toured with him? Wow, that's patience. <laughs> well, he it probably because, because of some, like, rock star stunt. <laughs> if it's yeah. worth doing, it's worth overdoing, I suppose. I mean, you get paid to overdo stuff and not let it work. Mm. Well, so it got you noticed, too, like, Bozzy Osborne biting the heads off bats. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I remember oh, yeah. that. Ozzy Osbourne actually did that on accident, and he yeah. was not happy with it. There was actually yeah. a point where he was with his wife, and he grabbed a pigeon, and he put its head off, and everybody around him freaked out. Wow. Dude, I had a newborn kitten Ozzy... that did that. You had a newborn kitten who bit off the head of a bird? <laughs> true story. I know, it's a true story. You told me about it, but that was just like... <laughs> I was not ready. I was not ready also, for this. Also, logic, logic. Mm -hmm. For you wondering, why would Ozzy Osbourne do that? Simple. It's Ozzy fucking Osbourne. He does whatever the hell he wants. Oh, Who's so... peckish? Oh, in a box. Who's no, I'm peckish. Oh, my Osbourne. Are you peckish? No, I'm Turkish. Sharon. 
Oh, I see, there's already somebody taking the name of Prince of Darkness. What the fuck? He's not right on the fucking place, but I've been the Prince of Darkness since 1979. I love his, uh, like his, one of his update videos at the end. He's like, no, well, you fuck off and let me get better. <laughs> He's got that aggressive attitude, and it's just hilarious. Um, I also like that he was invited to uh, some little showing of some sort. It was a parody group of, I think they were vegetarians or something like that. And it's a like they formed the band together to do like a spoof of McDonald's, saying "I am frying pan" or something like that. And they're dressed up as the uh, McDonald mascots. <laughs> okay. <But why? laughs> okay. I mean, for the lol? it's not. I've heard something similar. I think like Def showed me this band called Party Favors. Party oh. Cannon. The Party Cannon. Favorite Cannon. It was like they <laughs> they looked like like man children, literally having like a kid's birthday party, only for them to have this like really sad music. <laughs> No, okay. very super edgy <laughs> slam metal. They even call themselves party metal. I'm sorry, but like, it's like Dev, Dev fucking coming out left field, going, "No, you have his mind." Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, of course you just go off the top of the name. Just so back to what I uh, was saying earlier. Um, so yeah. Death Force knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Django Unchained, I think it was. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio was, um, there was a scene where he actually, sh like, he pounded a desk, or he pounded a table, and he and shed a like glass, and he got glass shards all over his hand, and he still continued acting during that shot. Oh, what is oh yeah, the blood on his hand is actually oh. his own blood. Yeah. Oof. Doesn't he wipe? Okay. So, fucking, when he wipes the blood on someone's face, it's real. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that like really, oh. really bad? Yeah, I mean, like, if not you at least have, have to do your job. Diseases, and that person has an open cut, then yes. Okay. This is like, cause like, I don't mean like, oh, that's fucked up bad. Broke. I mean like, you know. This isn't the 1980s anymore, so everybody uh, has been smart enough to hopefully vaccinate. Not everybody, but you know what I mean. Damn it! Ah. Yeah. Everybody in quotations. Even if a person had a blood uh, disease and the blood got on someone else, it would still have to get into that other person's blood system, bloodstream, yes. or digestion yeah. to affect God. them. God. Just imagine my dismay and sadness when my husband told me the original actor who played the predator creature is dead. I'm like, honey, he oh. didn't even make it to his 30s. I'm like, oh, damn, what? what do you mean he's dead? He's, he wasn't that old in that movie. He's like, honey, he didn't even reach his 30s. Fuck. Who didn't? <laughs> what did the original was... actor who played the predator creature, um, he passed away from AIDS, bad blood transfusion. Oh. Uh, I get bad blood transfusion. It, it kind of reminds me oh, too. Oh, uh, I just, I got it, I got it. Yeah, okay. it, it kind of reminds me too of, um, no, um, Riley knows what I'm talking about. The actor who played Killer Bob in Twin Peaks, Guy did an amazing job playing a creepy ass villain, despite the fact that he was just a stagehand. And yet, yeah. if you look him up, he tragically passed away in the 90s again because of AIDS compilation. Uh, uh. AIDS compilation. AIDS they compilation. simply they they simply didn't know back then what AIDS was and how it spread, and they never tested of, tip, they never tested lot, people. There was a yeah. lot of fear mongering and shit, and yeah. It was kind of, there's probably also a lot of what we have today where people underestimate it and don't yeah. take it seriously how quickly can The spread. inventor of the frisbee yeah. was it's turned not, into a frisbee like, when he died? It's just like, forget, it's no, it's, people now they're being like, it's not a real problem, I'm not one of the thousands of people who died. And it's only 1%. Me. And proceeds yeah. to happen to them, surprise Pikachu face. Yeah. Who could have seen this coming? That right, science science. Yeah, when you really think about it, AIDS as a concept is actually a lot deadlier and more horrifying than most zombie plagues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just think about its method yeah. of 
Think about its method of transmutation. It's something that you're biologically driven to do, which is part of the reason why everyone freaked out about it in the 80s, because like, oh my god, we will biologically ruin ourselves. Holy shit. And then we somehow found a way to like contain it. That was, which is really awesome, by the way, because that's a really aggressive thing. Yeah. I mean, at these yeah. days, you can still live an active life if you have it. It's just you you're going to have to take all these the pills all, yeah. these, all the damn time, but... At least now we're in a day and age where it's not a guaranteed death sentence. There were instances, what's kind of interesting mm -hmm. is, uh, I found articles about this where people would develop a cure for AIDS, like, really briefly, but it adapts so quickly that they can never find one that's permanent or that lasts forever. It's like you can kind of, like, snipe a few people, and then it doesn't work anymore. Shit. Mm. I, I just realized something. Damn it. That's yes. kind of funny in order to brighten the mood. So, um, <laughs> so fucking, so AIDS is related to something that we're biologically is he driven to do. Is he so gone? It's a self-destructive sort Thank of thing. Thank God! That, kind, like, that kind of makes us like peppers in a way, because peppers made themselves spicy, so other creatures would stop eating them, and then we found them, and we just ate them more. <laughs> so. Yeah. Because we're masochists. <laughs> Oh no, well, now he not, has to be It's, not, it's not so much that peppers made themselves spicy, it's just Damn it. ones that were spicy got eaten less by certain animals, so then they became more populous. And then Natural humans found them and they're like, oh, we like these, let's make more. <laughs> oh no. Ima it's like, imagine that from the perspective of peppers. It's like, oh, it's like after a few hundred years or whatever of just like this friggin' this just shrink of evolution, Darwinism, and survival through becoming spicy, and then all of a sudden, humans Damn arrive. It. Level 2. Okay, logic. Humans yeah. already broke the spectrum. We figured out how to throw rocks. We already <laughs> broke the game. We weaponized the ground. No, no, ah, you need to, I found out how to throw a rock. I guess I've broken your game now. No, just like, freaking. I just find it, it hilarious. Big rock. It's like... It's like just thinking about it, it's just like freaking we've stopped everything from eating us. We're the ultimate survivors. Humans show up and then the game is just like level two, begin. What? <laughs> Next way. All that hard we work like and it. for what? For round ah, five and two, motherfuckers. Here's the thing though, here's the thing though. It's not like peppers were defeated because because um because Fuck. people like them, that means they were bred even more. Yeah. Pop yes. peppers are oh, a lot yeah. more populous because you, we want them. Here's the thing about like a lot of fruits and vegetables. Too. They look far different like a hundred or so years ago after like selective breeding in order to get more out of a out of a plant mm -hmm. and shit. Yeah, like carrots were commonly and purple. Watermelons. Oh, watermelons. Watermelons. Were watermelons had a tiny amount of red just around the seeds, and now they're just this massive red with a tiny amount of rind around it. Mm -hmm. Potatoes used to be poisonous. I don't Aren't think tomatoes actually were poisonous. Potatoes, the ones that we have today, oh, were. Potatoes. Oh, potatoes. Oh. Mushrooms were also very Back poisonous. Back in the day, people thought tomatoes were poisonous, but tomatoes <laughs> also have changed a lot. Damn it! Potatoes were bred. At, they were originally a poison, but through breeding Is that and a saving point here. Cha uh, I guess. I guess like. <laughs> I don't know what they said. It they just evolved to a point where they were edible and people figured it oh, out. Oh <laughs> Jesus! Oh yeah. Also, all the, yeah. yeah. All this talk of food and deadliness and things reminds me of a fucking. Oh uh, hey, look! It's a star. A post I've seen once. Star. It's a red star. Ooh, red star. Did you Why make the star red? Russia? 